Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. So knife boxes. Um, <laughs> I've got so many of them in my collection, I thought, why not uh, do a video on knife boxes? And Because some of them look really cool and there's a lot of artwork in, involved in uh, uh, modern knife boxes. I guess there are some... Uh, uh, artwork in some of the older knife boxes too, but not nearly like it is today. I mean, today knife boxes are definitely designed to um, help sell the product inside. There's no doubt about that. Um, and there's knife boxes I like, knife boxes I don't like, um, and everything else. So I thought, why not do a video on knife boxes? And what we see here is uh, an official Cub Scout knife box. Uh, that was made by Imperial Knife Company. Uh, I do not think the Cub Scout who bought this knife had any intention of saving the box or anything. He ended up doing that. Um, uh, is it a collector's grade box? Well, obviously not. It's been used quite a bit. You see the flap is ripped down here. See that it has been retaped up and everything. Um, but it's still a cool little box, so there's some history behind it. But um, I would have bought this knife with or without the box. The box was just uh, an added little touch. Uh, what I liked about the knife is it's in really good shape, and you can actually see uh, a bit of the uh, Cub Scout logo on a knife that was made back in the 1950s. You usually don't see a Cub Scout knife in that kind of shape. Uh, the box was a bonus. Uh, and the thing is, is a lot of knives from back in the 1950s and stuff did not come with a box. They were just sold at the, uh, at the, uh, you know, they were, they were bulk packaged and you went in, you bought the knife and it was sold to you wrapped in a piece of paper. So there's a lot of old knives that don't have packaging. Packaging is more or less something that you see in modern knives. And I actually contend that a lot of the packaging is really something that makes the knife collectible but not necessarily a collector's item now let me explain what i mean by that uh, to me a collector's item is something that people get interested in and they collect because it's scarce uh, and it has some kind of historical value or something of that nature uh, so uh, an old cub scout knife regardless of the packaging becomes a collector's item because it becomes scarce, not because it came in a fancy box. Um, something put out by the Franklin Mint is a collectible. It's something that was designed specifically to be collected. And uh, that is what's happening with a lot of uh, knives these days is they're actually being um, sold with the idea that the person who is collecting it is not going to use it. Um, collector's items are often used and abused and so to find one in really good shape becomes uh, um, harder to find. A lot of the knives today that are being made by case that come in special packaging and stuff, those knives may never get used so their value um, in the collector's market is probably not going to be as big as something that was not expected to be used, but becomes valued. And that brings us to the first packaging that you run into quite often, and that is the uh, clam packaging or vacuum pack, the card packaging, whatever you want to call it. It's the ones that have the plastic around the knife and everything. And um, people ask, is this really worth keeping in the packaging and such? And I always argue, no, it's not. And I've heard other uh, collectors say the same thing. What's important is the knife inside. So you can actually take the knife, uh, the packaging apart as far as I'm concerned. What's cool about them, though, is if you keep the card that the knife came on and it's in good shape, that might be useful. So especially if the artwork is cool on the on the uh, card. The card might be worth something, but this plastic is just a danger to the knife, so I always suggest getting rid of it. Um, what's important, though, is the knife on the inside, and if it comes clam packaged, then you know the knife has not been used. 
unless they have somehow repackaged the clam packaging. So that's uh, my thought on clam packaging. And it is one of the worst kind of packaging that you have on knives. And it became really popular, I guess, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, somewhere around there. Any case, let's move on to boxes. That's really what we're going to talk about. Now I'm going to talk about four different kind of boxes. And they're by four different companies. And uh, uh, to make this a little interesting, basically what I've done is I've grabbed... Uh, uh, the knife that was in the box. I usually do not have the knife in the box. This particular box is by uh, Case, and this is one of the favorite boxes. I, li I, I like the, uh, the standard green box of Case. They have several others. They have the uh, flag box, and then they have the tan colored box, but this green box is my favorite from Case. Um, what I don't like about the case boxes is they are a flap type box. So the box just has an opening flap on the end. Now the good thing about it is if you're going to store the knife separate from the, from the uh, box, in this case it's my five and a half inch toothpick by case, um, if you want to store the box separate from the, uh, the knife, you can open up both flaps and you can fold the box flat. So that is one way you can store these. Usually I just keep the box uh, as is with the paper on the inside. Uh, what I like about them is the fact that they usually are the size of the knife so they don't take up too much extra space. What I don't like about them is they have a flap. I, I would rather have a tray type box instead of a flap box. Now there are two kinds of uh, uh, tray boxes and this is the first one. It, it's a, a sleeve box that has a tray in it. Uh, in this case it's for a, a, a Swiss Army Knife Explorer. Uh, other companies use this. This is my uh, favorite box from Swiss Army. I like the gray box with the large Swiss Army brand limited on there. Um, the Explorer that came with it had red handles originally. This is my EDC. I ended up getting it in this box. Um, and this is a box kind. I, I, I do like this box. You also have sleeve boxes that go around a flap box. I find that kind of nonsensical. Uh, but I do like the uh, tray box that has a sleeve on it. So you just pop it open and the knife is in there and you can close it up. So I like that kind of tray box. I'll put my Explorer there too. And then you have your basic tray box. This is a lot of companies use this style. And this is probably my favorite style box by uh, just about any company. And this is also, when it comes to your just run of the mill basic Rough Rider box, the denim blue box is my favorite. I, I really like this box. I like the uh, wording on the side and everything else. Um, in this case, the knife that came in it. They, they packaged them in a plastic bag. I always remove the plastic bag. Uh, I think they just uh, collect moisture, so I don't use the, uh, the uh, plastic bag that comes in those. I wish they wrapped them in paper. In this case, this is the uh, French Tickler by them, which is a locking toothpick. Uh, but that's the tray box. Uh, very basic. You can just close it like that, drop the knife in there uh, for display. You've still got the box and everything else. Um, you can close it up and you're good to go. So the tray box is pretty cool. I like that one better than the other two that are showing now. Now another very common one that is very popular, especially these days, is the magnetic flap boxes, um, which are like this one by Colt. I notice it's been autographed by a bunch of people from the old Knives Live TV show uh, back in 2013. And there's the knife that came in it, and I won this as a uh, prize off of a knife collector. Nice boxes, nice presentation and everything, but when you look at the size of the knife that is inside the box, the box takes up a lot of real estate. And um, they're designed so that you cannot put anything in it except the knife that came with it, which is good and bad, but that um, I really would not want to continue to store a knife and all of this material, I, I worry that it might damage it uh, in some way. You've got a lot of material in there that can collect moisture and everything else. So 
to me, it's this is a great gift box, a great presentation box, but it's a lot of weight and a lot of real estate that it is taking up. So, um, actually, the least favorite of all my type of boxes that knives come in are the magnetic boxes because uh, they often are much larger than the knife and just take up too much space. Okay, time to look at my favorite boxes in the collection. Um, none of the ones you've seen were one of my favorite boxes. These were definitely designed for some kind of presentation piece, um, you know, as a gift set or something like that. And um, I don't know, I just think they're pretty cool. They really are eye catchers. And so I thought I'd share them with you. And by the way, after you see those, I've got about five minutes of slides to show you of other really cool looking boxes in the collection. I'll start off with a box from Rough Rider, which is the Dog Bone Jack. Uh, and here we talk about meeting Jack on the side. I've done a video on uh, this knife already. It's a really cool knife, but it's also a really cool box. And this is one of those boxes that's on display in my knife area because I really like the box. Um, so let's uh, see if we can get the box to stand up there. There's the dog bone jack box, and here's the knife that goes with it. Comes with a nice leather slip that can uh, be hooked onto a belt or just dropped into a pocket. The knife itself is shaped kind of like a bone. You notice it's got a uh, uh, the bolsters are slightly enlarged, and you've got a dog bone shield there, saw cut bone, um, and um, basically an office knife. Otherwise, you've got a uh, Spear master blade with a etch on it, and then uh, the back blade is a spay blade, and then you have a hidden lanyard loop there, uh, and a little dog whistle on it. But uh, this is about the box, and there's the dog bone jack box. And like I said, I've done a video on the knife, and the box is prominently displayed in the video. Now, that was the Rough Rider Dog Bone Jack, and um, if you collect Rough Rider knives, you know that they have a variety of series out there, and uh, each series tends to have its own kind of packaging to it, and some of it is quite imaginative. And um, the next one is definitely one of the more imaginative uh, Rough Rider series packaging, and that was for the Rough Rider Moonshiner series. Now, the series was not that big. There were six knives in the series. There was a canoe, a sow belly, a congress, a muskrat, a trapper, and uh, a whittler. Those were the six knives that came in it. And each one of them came in this whiskey barrel. You notice you've got a uh, moonshiner leaning up against a stump with his uh, little uh, jug of uh, moonshine there. And then on the top, you have Rough Rider Moonshiner again with the uh, uh, little jug up on top and you pull this little uh, strap here and you can open the container. And inside the container you have one of the knives and a uh, two ounce flask. And here we have the flask. Uh, again with the Moonshiner logo there and then the uh, Moonshiner leaning up against his stump. And uh, in this case, the one knife I'm showing is the uh, canoe. The other one I have is the sow belly. I did not pick up the entire series, uh, but here we have the canoe that came with the uh, moonshiner. And you got the moonshiner uh, on the uh, blade edge there, and uh, the moonshiner shield, wonderful corncob jig bone handle in a nice goldenrod color. And uh, very difficult to find these days, but uh, and also not that cheap. They were not that cheap when they came out either. Um, the typical uh, Rough Rider canoe at the time cost about twelve, thirteen dollars. The Moonshiner cost twenty bucks, and that was mainly because you also got a two ounce uh, sheath and the Moonshiner whiskey barrel for a. Uh, presentation uh, piece. Next is uh, the Meyerchen Tested at Sea box. It's your basic white box uh, with the 
humpback whale in a blue oval with Meyerton tested at sea on there. And just about every Meyerton knife you buy is going to come in one of these boxes if you buy it new. I think the exception is the uh, P300 Sailor's Tool, which comes clam packaged. But all the other Meyerton knives come in a box similar to this. Uh, different sizes, obviously, depending on the size of the knife. It's a very heavy cardstock box, and it's got a uh, kind of a... It's textured so that it kind of looks like a silvery white. Uh, reflects the light really nicely. Uh, very well made box and then the every Meyerton knife will come with a ballistic nylon sheath a black sheath with the Meyerton uh, whale on it also velcro closure uh, set up for horizontal or vertical carry and then the knives are in this blue foam packaging around the knife they'll almost always be displayed like that so you can see the whale on the blade uh, easy to get out of the packaging too, even though it is nice and snug. Like I said, I don't store it in the box though. Um, then you got your Meyerton uh, typical sheep foot blade with the um, um, shackle key built into the blade. Uh, you can get it uh, serrated or fine edge. You got the whale there on there. Uh, liner lock. This is a second generation. And then the marlin spike on the back side also with a liner lock but that's the uh, Meyerton tested at sea box and uh, this is one of my favorites and it's a uh, wonderful to di to display so next up are a couple boxes for Colonel Coon knives now Colonel Coon knives have been around for a long time I think they went uh, bankrupt basically and uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works bought the um, the trademark for Colonel Coon, which is really a fun uh, trademark. I like the uh, little raccoon walking with a walking stick and wearing overalls. It's just um, a cool little thing. I like raccoons, so that's why I was drawn to the Colonel Coon knives. Um, and you see there's two different boxes here. I like both boxes. I definitely like the all-orange box better because of... Um, the way the uh, raccoon displays it just you know you've got a more raccoon on the box and also the coloring is better so I like this box better but the knife is a different knife and that's something I wanted to talk about is depending on the box that you're seeing with these you're going to get the knife made by a different company uh, we'll start here and that is the uh, older black box now, when Smoky Mountain Knife Works first bought Colonel Coon uh, trademark, they had the uh, knives made by Queen Cutlery. And um, there's a Queen Cutlery box. You notice it is a basic black box with a sticker on it. And that's what they've done here with this one is a black box with a sticker on it. Uh, and I'm going to digress for just a minute. Queen tended to use a basic black box with a label glued on the outside of the box. And most often you'll see a green label that'll read tool steel. And these are the uh, queen knives that are using D2 tool steel. I believe uh, queen also used 1095 carbon steel in some of their knives too. Uh, but most often it was D2 tool steel with a green label. And these were back when uh, uh, Queen knives were being made by Ontario. Um, now there's also a purple label uh, Queen box, and I believe those had 420 high carbon steel blades. Um, and another label you'll see in later made uh, Queen knives uh, will have DFC at the top. And these are the ones that were made by Daniel's family after Ontario sold uh, the trademark to, uh, and well, the entire company, the, the whole thing to Daniel's family. And you'll see a blue label that says DFC. So these were the later ones made. Um, still Queen Cutlery, but not the, the Queen Cutlery of um, Ontario days. And now Queen has once again been bought by um, 
Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I'm not sure what kind of boxes they're going to be showing up in yet. I have not seen them yet. But just wanted to let you know what the Queen boxes look like through the ages. Okay, back to the Colonel Coon boxes. Now, like I mentioned, this is the one that comes in a Queen box. So this knife is made by Queen. Or it should be a knife made by Queen. Somebody could always swap out the box, so you got to be careful. Um, and this particular one comes in a kind of a chintzy brown paper. Uh, it's the coon stripe, and you'll notice this is the toothpick. They're both of these are toothpicks, but you'll notice uh, a CC shield and then a Colonel Coon blade edge with the raccoon and Colonel Coon tang stamp. This particular one is one of 250 that were in the coon stripe. Uh, definitely a queen toothpick. And then um, the other one, which has the nicer box, is by Baron Son. It comes in a, a stiffer brown paper, which, interesting enough, also has uh, some kind of writing and German or something. I don't know. I don't know where they got the wrapping paper from. VCI. But you'll see that it is a different knife entirely. So you got to be careful. Make sure of what you're looking at. Just because it has the older box, make sure you got the right knife for the box. This is one uh, that is made by Baron Son. It's a toothpick. Uh, it's not bad. Nice wood handles going on. I, I don't know if it's walnut or, or oak. I can't remember what they said. Still Colonel Coon tank stamp, and uh, then Colonel Coon knives on the blade, but no raccoon on the blade. It's just the shield that has the uh, uh, Colonel Coon raccoon on it. Nicer box, but the uh, definitely the Queen box has the better knife. This is a much better knife, and you'll notice from the price also, because uh, when the Colonel Coon knives came out in the black boxes like that, uh, they were averaging around 80 or $90. The ones in the orange box go for about 40 bucks, So about half the price, but a nicer looking box. Let me clear everything away and go for the next one. I should mention, this is the one I tend to display more often. It's just a nicer box. Now, my uh, one of my favorite knife boxes isn't even from a knife company. It is from a company that... Uh, makes a variety of stuff for uh, I guess uh, millennials and such um, whiskey flasks uh, bags things of that nature and it's like that whole retro kind of looking stuff and uh, the company is Trixie and Milo and uh, this was their Mac the knife a genuine Trixie and Milo product you're only as sharp as your knife kind of old-timey box and everything looks pretty cool and then on the back side, it has uh, the classic sunfish style pocket knife. Uh, my grandfather always said a smart man will always keep his powder dry, his knife sharp, and his whiskey handy. And then uh, tells you everything about the knife, 7CR, 17 MOV grade steel. And then a knife is not a toy. And been showing all the other knives. This is one of the uh, two Trixie and Milo's I have. Um, and it's a cat with a clock in his stomach. I'm sure people are aware of where that came from. They've seen it before. And then on the back side, stay sharp. And it is a sunfish, but it is not your typical sunfish. You got the big old fat spear blade for the main blade. But the secondary is not a pin blade. It is a cap lifter screwdriver. I don't know if you can even get these things anymore, uh, but just a really cool knife in an exceptionally cool box. And, uh, you know, it definitely makes a nice gift box. So they knew what they were doing when they were doing this. Uh, a knife is not a toy. In any case, Trixie and Milo. Now, I already talked about how I don't like those magnetic boxes because they're too large. Well, you can say the same thing about presentation tins and wood boxes. They're 
much too big for the buy, for the knife inside most of the time. This one is not too bad for the knife that happens to be inside. But as you can see, this was for a five inch toothpick and you could easily fit four or five of them in here. And the tin takes up a lot of space. Um, they look nice and they're great for, uh, for gift giving and such because it's a nice presentation. But um, unless you can easily remove this stuff on the inside and you need a tin for uh, loose change or something like that, they really just occupy a lot of space. I like the wood boxes better than tins, though. That brings us to my favorite little wooden box, which is the uh, Schrade Collectible Riverboat Box. Uh, and it's got a Riverboat Gambler's Dirk on the inside. And, uh, and Mother of Pearl, which is nothing to sneeze at either. I really like the knife, so um, wasn't a real problem with the box. But I also like the box quite a bit. I like the, uh, the riverboat on it and everything. Um, let's take a look at the knife first, and then we'll talk about why I also like the box. Um, you see uh, the heavy pommel there with the Tree of Liberty on it, and then uh, the blade with the... God Armit the Patriot, which were very popular during the um, Civil War, uh, these kind of knives and such, and uh, also popular after the Civil War, especially because this was something you could easily drop inside your boot, pull out, and use, you know, when you're caught cheating at cards on a riverboat. Mother of Pearl is really nice on this knife, too. Um, the lock works quite well. Wonderful swedge on the blade, too. I'll do a better video on the, a review of this knife later. Um, I don't know why I've never done a review on it so far. But what I like about it is, well, first of all, I had to put this back in just for this video because you can just easily remove the liner here. It's not glued in or anything. And then you've got a nice little box that you could use for coins or anything else. Uh, but what I like about it is you throw in a little silica gel pack in this thing and you've got a small little humidor and now instead of just fitting one knife in the box I can easily fit two or three knives in the box with no problem and uh, close it up and have it on display like that and uh, when I want to get the knife out, I can grab whatever knife I want. So I can easily fit a lot more knives in there by just removing the liner on the inside. And this is one of those liners that was very easy to remove. And uh, that's why I kind of like this. The wooden boxes are better at um, uh, moisture, uh, wicking moisture away from the knives versus a metal tin. And that's why I like the wood boxes better than a metal tin. It doesn't hurt if it comes with a nice looking knife. Okay, before we move on to the slideshow, I'm going to show you one last, basically standard type of uh, packaging used by a particular knife company that basically prompted this entire video. And that is the uh, Great Eastern Cutlery Tube. Uh, I really like the tubes. I think they make a lot of sense. Uh, they're easy to stand up and display. They look nice. And uh, what uh, Great Eastern does is they cut the tube to size for the knife. So if you got a big knife, you get a big tube. If you got a small knife, you get a small tube. This particular one is for the Tidiut uh, Cutlery Beaver Tail, which is the number 97 Allegheny Coke bottle knife. Uh, I just did a video on that. And... Uh, so I'm not going to show the knife too much, but got the beaver tail, beaver tail uh, uh, blade etch, and the really cool tube. And uh, the tube displays very easily, and I really like it. In any case, let's move on to the slideshow, and uh, we'll talk again soon after the slideshow.
Well, that turned into a marathon. It was only supposed to be about five or ten minutes long. I was only planning on showing about five or six boxes, but then uh, when I started going through the three or four hundred boxes I had, I realized I was going to definitely have to show off more than that, hence the slideshow. Uh, there are plenty of boxes I did not show that were still quite colorful and quite creative, but uh, need to, to limit it to some way. And obviously, I wanted to talk about my favorites uh, in a little bit more depth, uh, so that's what I ended up doing. And so instead of being five or 10 minutes long, it ended up being close to 40 minutes long. Uh, I hope you found it uh, somewhat informational and uh, a little bit entertaining. But for me, uh, the thing is, is the knife boxes themselves are wonderful little pieces of art and uh, also advertisement. And they're a great thing to use to display within your knife collection to kind of break it up a little bit and give people other things to look at. Uh, and uh, I don't know, they're just kind of fun. And that's why this video was done. Hope you enjoyed it. No, it was long, but I hope it was also entertaining. I'd also like to know uh, what you do with your knife boxes. Do you keep them? Do you throw them away? Do you store your knives in the uh, boxes or whatever container they came in? Which boxes do you really hate? Which boxes do you like? Like I said, I really like the tray boxes. The uh, magnetic boxes and the metal tins, they are the bane of my existence. I really don't like them at all. But, uh, and I also like the box to fit the knife. I don't want a box that's too big for the knife. In any case, I'd love to hear your thoughts on knife boxes. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.